We are back with a brand new video, guys. What is Hubby Nation? In today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, day two and day three of free agency. I'm also talking about the summer league game that the Heat just played a couple hours ago um, against the Los Angeles Lakers, how Nikola Jovic looked, um, how the Heat have to land a star before free agency is over, um, how Nikola Jovic's rookie contract impacts that, and so on and so forth, man. So make sure you guys you know, stay tuned till the end of the video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below what your thoughts are about free agency. Let's get right into it. So um, obviously the Miami Heat uh, just wrapped up a summer league game a couple hours ago in which they basically got blown out by 40. And um, it was a very, very ugly summer league game to watch on the Heat's part. Um, obviously it's summer league. I'm not taking too much stock into that. It's only one game too. So a lot of the guys that you guys, you know, saw play, um, you can't really judge them based off of one game, especially Nikola Jovic. Nikola Jovic is a guy who's drafted as a as a project. He's a guy with high upside, um, but he has to be developed right. And, you know, obviously he didn't have the best game. He had a pretty terrible game if you look at it. You know, defensively, there was always concerns with him. That was my biggest concern with him was his defense. But even offensively tonight, he just looked out of place. Uh, um, his rhythm was not there. Um, I did think that he should have had a lot more plays when when he had the ball in his, his his in his hands. There was a lot of plays where he was just coming off of the screens and stuff. I don't think he's that type of player. I think he needs the ball in his hands. I think he needs to you know initiate offense. He is six eleven, so a lot of people might think why did why is he having the ball in his hands? But like he's a lot more comfortable when he has the ball in his hands because his ball handling is so advanced for his height. He's very skilled, so it's like I I think you have to play with him, um, you know, with the ball in his hands because I think he's that much better as a as a initiator rather than just a roller and a screen setter so um yeah i mean i i think that the usage of nicole Leo, which was a little bit questionable to me i thought he should have you know played with the ball more um maybe they'll probably in increase some touches but it seemed like he wasn't really getting the ball too much whenever he shot it it was kind of out of rhythm because and that's kind of that, that that happens sometimes you know if you're a guy that hasn't really gotten a lot of touches and and and, the, and one of the first touches you get you you just miss an air ball like he did with his first shot you know it's it's kind of because you don't really have a feel of the ball yet you don't really have rhythm yet you're barely getting the ball the first time you get it you're you 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 have to you know uh you put that pressure on yourself that you have to do something with it because you're rarely getting touches and I, it seemed like that that's what happened tonight he hit a three and um he got he got on the board but Apart from that, man, it was pretty ugly from Nikola Jovic. But like I said, I'm not judging him based off of one game. I don't think Heat fans should, ju should judge him based off of one game. I know this is a time that a lot of fans, you know, have, have a lot of crazy takes because this is free agency. The Heat go hand in hand with free agency because um, we Pat Riley lo loves to whale hunt. That's been, you know, his, his, um, his motto or whatever since he's gotten here to try to go after big fishes. And a lot of fans... You know, we're pretty upset that Nikola Jovic signed his rookie contract on Twitter. I was seeing a lot of fans were like, nah, he's a bust, trade him, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I mean, obviously, there were some trolls out there, but like, I actually genuinely felt that there was people out there thinking that Nikola Jovic is a bust. It's like, how can you be a bust off of one summer league game? Like, you know, so many people in summer league, like there was a guy named Russ Smith who dominated summer league. You guys probably don't even know who that is, bro. He was a summer league legend. Vanderbilt, a Vanderbilt, whatever his name is, another guy who was a summer league legend, didn't do anything in the league. So it's like you can you can't judge anyone based off of summer league because you can be a stud in summer league and not do anything in the league. Um, or on the opposite side, you could be mediocre in summer league and be a really good player. So it's like summer league is not the best time to judge a player, especially if it's just one game. So I don't want to see anyone calling Nikola Jovic a bust or anything. Um, I do think that he's not untouchable though. I would trade him. You know, in an in instant, in an instant heartbeat, if if, if it was keeping Nikola Jovic, um, and 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 or sending him into, in a trade package for Donovan Mitchell, and if he was the guy that was the make or break, if the Jazz would accept if Nikola Jovic was thrown in, I would do the trade because it's like he, he's good and he has really good upside, but it's like we're, we 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 might get a star if we were to include him in a trade package. Speaking of that, he signed his rookie contract, which means that for 30 days, he's not eligible to be traded. Now there could be like a trade, like bait placed in agreement where the Heat or who, and, and which, whichever team say, okay, Nikola Jovic will go to the other team, but it's like, you can't really, like you're not officially traded to the other team until 30 days pass. 
Um, so that is the only implication with this rookie contract being signed. Now there were instances where like guys signed their rookie contract and then and then got traded. Like Andrew Wiggins was the biggest name that I could think of. Um, he signed his rookie contract and then got traded for Kevin Love. So it's like you you can still get traded. I'm not saying that you cannot, but it's 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 it certainly puts like a not a barrier, but it it puts like a um an implication that the Heat really liked this kid because I don't think he would have signed his rookie contract so fast if he if they if they if they didn't like him so it's like um yeah we just gotta you know live with that like i said there still can be a trade in place like an agreement in place for a team to send um nikolajovic for the heat to send nikolajovic to another team but he actually won't get there until 30 days pass uh that's basically what it implies um apart from that you know they're they're i mean the free agency it's kind of been pretty dry you know what i'm saying like it hasn't been much after the deadman and the um the oladipo signings nothing much has gone on man um shout out to everyone who joined my spaces on twitter i did i did have a spaces um on twitter um it was like five six people not not too many but like we had a really good conversation like i think we went on for like an hour and a half so shout out to everyone who joined like you guys know who you are you guys are the ghosts for that because i'm gonna be doing that periodically more when i when i talk about you know free agency and stuff so if you guys want to you know uh tune into those and and, and give your thoughts and opinions uh, my twitter will be in the description so i mean just just feel free to tap in whenever i launch those spaces because i will be you know launching those uh pretty pretty often so uh we were we were having a great discussion about free agency a lot of fans were voicing their opinions and um i mean i think we all came into agreement that you know we need a big star in miami and and, and that that's a fact like i i considered it and i tweeted it like a couple hours ago like if we don't get donovan mitchell or kevin durant i think this is a failure of an offseason it's like you know you have to get a big star um the celtics i forgot to talk about them in the last video but they really strengthened adding uh, adding malcolm brogdon adding Dan danilo gallinari and basically giving up nothing they didn't give up any rotational players um who, who played in the playoffs and and they basically got two good quality players and Malcolm Brockton is a really good point guard Gallinari even if he cannot defend is a good offensive spark for them they're improving the Bucks you know are getting all their pieces back they added Joe Ingles the Sixers stole PJ from us so a lot of these teams are improving steadily and um, you cannot just sit around and you know twiddle your thumbs if you're Pat Riley I'm not saying that's what he's doing but you know there hasn't been any moves made and i'm going to be patient because i like the last thing i want to do is doubt the front office but i mean it's it's starting to get increasingly you know uh, unlikely in my opinion that we're going to pull off a trade for kevin durant because i mean the rudy gobert trade really messed a lot of this stuff up for like um the values of players because he went for like five unprotected picks he went for four starting quality players um and that really is like a big haul for the jazz like the jazz i thought fleeced the timberwolves for that trade like they they got a lot of stuff back for rudy gobert um and that kind of puts it into perspective like if rudy gobert went for that much how do you, how much do you think kevin durant will go for and when i was when i was thinking about that i was like i don't think we have the assets i don't i really don't think we have the assets that brooklyn wants to pull off a kevin durant trade obviously hero and Jovic and all these guys are, are good players but brooklyn wants a star like a guy who can be a superstar and i don't think we have a guy like that i don't think we have enough picks we only have like three picks that we can throw in i think kevin durant is very unlikely now donovan mitchell on the other hand it's 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 different because donovan mitchell after rudy gobert got traded a lot of people were like donovan mitchell is next because the jazz are going to go into a rebuild apparently Woj announced that the jazz plan to build around donovan mitchell um and then some jazz beat writers some some reinforced that some said that there, there was pushback on that particular idea um and donovan mitchell could go if he if he wants to and that's basically what it is it's, it's really up to the player for the donovan mitchell situation like if he requests a trade and if he wants out then even if the jazz want to keep him you can't keep a player who wants out on your team like it's very difficult to do like the situation might not get resolved especially if, if the team is not contending and not the jazz are not contending so it's not like you can resolve the situation by winning some games because i don't think they're going to win a lot of games next year like even with donovan mitchell on that team and with all the picks they have i mean Don donovan mitchell has to realize you know for himself that the ceiling of that team is already you know peaked like you like with, with, with him on the team you know the ceiling is not even a conference finals because they've never reached one so it's like I don't care who you trade for at this point. You're not going to get Kevin Durant. You're going to get probably at best DeAndre Ayton and, and some surrounding players. And that team is not much better than the Rudy Gobert team. So it's like, 
if you're Donovan Mitchell, obviously this is me being biased because I want him to come. I want him to come to Miami, but it's like you got to realize that you're not going to win any time in Utah, and you can be respectful about it. And you can go to the front office and say, "Listen, I love Utah. I love the franchise. I love the city. I love the fans, um, and I'm thankful for you guys giving me an opportunity um, and trading for me on draft night." But at the same time, you know, I want to win. And it looks like you guys are going in a completely different direction from what I want to do. And it looks like we've already peaked as a team with me here. So please send me to a team that I want to go to. He'll probably put Miami. He'll probably put New York on those on, on that list. And and bada boom, bada bam. Like you have you have your you have the opportunity and the window to trade for a guy like that. Now, if he doesn't request a trade, it's going to be a, very difficult to trade for him because the Jazz are already you know, set on not trying to trade for him. And um, I mean, not trying to trade him. And Danny Ainge is the uh, president over there. And he's him and Pat Riley do not like each other. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I mean, the Heat never like it easy anyway. So, I mean, I trust the front office. I, I trust that they have a plan in place. Um, if they didn't, they would have used the mid-level exception already and just panicked and signed a bunch of guys um, in, in free agency. We all know that this free agency class is not the strongest. So I'm glad that they're not, you know, go out, going out and spending a lot of money here and there. Um, a lot of the moves and a lot of the upgrades are going to have to be done throughout through the trade market. And um, we'll see what happens. We'll see, you know, if they land a big fish. Um, if they don't, I don't know what the backup plan is. Um, that's what I'm most afraid of, is that if they strike out on KD and Mitchell, what are they going to do now? Because there isn't really any other star out there. Kyrie is was the other star, but he looks like he's, you know, about to go to L.A. So I don't think you can do anything about that, like as far as getting another star in place. I, in place. Um, I, I really like John Collins. I think John Collins would be a great addition on this team. But um, if you get John Collins and if you strike out on KD and Mitchell, you're basically with you. You have the same team as last year, except you have John Collins added to it. Now, is that better? Yeah, probably because John Collins is better than PJ Tucker, but I don't know if, still if that puts us over the top. You know what I'm saying? And PJ Tucker did a lot of little things for us that went unnoticed, especially on the defensive end. So um, I still think you need a star. Um, I don't think John Collins is going to cut it, even though I would really want John Collins on this team. Um, and I'm saying this like John Collins is already on on the heat. Like it's not even guaranteed that we go for John Collins. It might be Jay Crowder. It might be TJ Warren. It might be Harrison Barnes. Um, and those names don't really strike fear into anyone either. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta get one of the stars available, whether it's KD, whether it's Mitchell, and then you can go from there, see what happens. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, obviously we're only like two or three days in, um, so I'm not really sweating it. Um, a lot of the big names are gone in free agency, but like I said, this is not the strongest free agency class anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Like I said, uh, hopefully you guys, you know, um, stay tuned, you know, keep tuning into my videos because I will keep you guys updated um, and, and, and follow my second channel. I mean, subscribe to my second channel if you guys have not already. Link will be in the pinned comment below. Um, last but not least, let me know what your thoughts are about the Miami Heat's free agency. Um, what are your predictions? What is your wish list? Like, give me realistic wish list. Don't tell me I want KD, Kyrie, LeBron, AD. Like, forget all that. Give me some realistic wish lists. And yeah, um, I'm going to wrap it up there. We're going to be out. I'll see y'all there as always.